All right, so first I wanna thank everyone for taking the time to join the CDI Tech Summit 3. I hope that you found some of the sessions to be valuable uh, and, and hope you'll find this one to be equally valuable. Now, uh, over the next half hour or so, uh, you know, the focus of this conversation will be not so much on the technical components of ServiceNow, but more so some of the challenges that we've seen uh, with our customers with driving adapt adoption and, and maximizing value out of the ServiceNow platform. Uh, and then we'll talk a little bit about an offering that CDI has that helps solve both of those challenges. But before we get into that, uh, let's just do some introductions quickly. So my name is Brian Del Cid. I'm the director of our ServiceNow Managed Services practice here at CDI, where I oversee our four managed services offerings. Um, you know, interestingly enough, my career evolved alongside the ServiceNow platform, uh, where I started on the uh, fulfiller side as a desktop support technician. Uh, I then moved into project management and leveraged the ITBM suite. And uh, I, I also leveraged that same tool set to deploy uh, ServiceNow in a, in a massive re-implementation. Uh, so I've spent a lot of time uh, on, on the platform and ultimately I became the ServiceNow platform owner where I was driving the vision and, you know, extracting value uh, out of, you know, all the capabilities for the organization where I was. Uh, you know, with that and, and all the, the, the time I've spent on the customer side, I thought initially that a lot of the challenges that I was experiencing were unique to me and my organization. But now having moved over to the service provider side, um, I'm finding that there are some uh, common themes that you know you all probably feel are unique to you, but you know through my lens, I see them recurring across all of our customers. And uh, I'm gonna turn it over to Dave Packer, who is, is also very close to customers and shed some light on some of the challenges that he's seen. Hey, thanks, Brian. Hi, everyone. I'm uh, Dave Packer, and I lead our uh, solution consulting organization at ServiceNow. That's, that's the team of pre-sales folks that help you all navigate the platform and help build roadmaps, architectures, and demos. Um, been here about four and a half years now. It's been a great ride. And I spent about 20 years in tech in general. I actually started my career as a developer, which uh, that experience has been quite uh, relevant to, to what we're doing right now at ServiceNow with all of our investment into the DevOps world, uh, but also taking spending some time in the professional services arm uh, of, of the last company I was at uh, before moving over to pre-sales. So as I said, uh, service now four plus years, I've, uh, I typically work with customers uh, around 5,000 employees, they have about 5,000 employees. Um, and as I talk to many customers, there, there's some common challenges that I come across uh, during these conversations. Um, one of the most common ones is just we are currently in a really, really tight labor market across the board in tech, and it's no, no different for ServiceNow. Um, our customer base continues to grow. We're opening up new logos. We're bringing ServiceNow into new, new accounts. Um, and uh, as customers look, as our customers look to hire staff, uh, it's a, it's a war for talent out there right now. And and a lot a lot of the other key tenants of of having success with ServiceNow really depend on it. Right, we, 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 when we go through a sales cycle of service now, we build a roadmap, a vision for the platform. And partners like CDI help us see uh, that vision to fruition. Uh, they're critical to our success, as is the staff at our, at our customers, right? Uh, without, without having uh, appropriate folks in place, it's really difficult to, to uh, get to that, that state, to realize the value that the plat platform has to offer. And so a lot of times when we don't do that, we, we, you know, we, we end up with shelfware, which we, none of us want, neither the customer nor us, our software is not cheap. Um, lastly, I'll, I'll mention, as, as customers do have, start to see success with us, which most customers do, uh, one, of the, one of the things that they struggle with is the governance model, because ServiceNow tends to grow like a weed once, once we see it. There's just, the platform is so flexible and extensible, it can solve a lot of business issues and challenges. So it's not uncommon to have our customers see a, a, a situation where many different business units come to them for help for automation use cases that we can help with. So having a, a governance model that can ma manage demand, manage uh, 
the requirements and, and uh, rollouts of new solutions is, is paramount to the success of our customers. Yeah, absolutely. And and just to highlight a little bit more on on the you know resources required, right? I, I listed out quite a few uh, resources, either you know the people or the skill sets that you need to successfully drive the long term vision of the ServiceNow platform. And you know finding these resources is difficult, as Dave said. Uh, but if you find them, hiring them can be extremely expensive as well. Right, so you know between the adoption, the roadmap, and and the resources to to execute, um, you know th these are some pretty prevalent challenges uh, in the industry right now. But you know what if I said I know I, I might know a vendor or a partner like uh, CDI, who's an elite service now partner and has a creative uh, approach to solve all these problems uh, with with the next gen offering. Right, so I'll, I'll talk. Cool. <laughs> yeah, so I'll I'll spend uh, the next few minutes just talking a little bit about you know what the next gen offering is and and how we can solve or some of your challenges like we've solved some of our customers' challenges. Uh, but first, it's important to understand uh, the difference between the traditional approach and the approach we take with next gen. Right, so what you're used to today likely is you engage a vendor, um, hopefully CDI, maybe someone else, uh, to, to embark on a you know, ServiceNow project where you lay out your requirements, uh, we put together an SOW, we go back and forth on pricing, um, you, know, you match it against your budget, gets approved, CDI assigns a project team, we execute that project, uh, maybe you know, stick around for some post go live support, but after that, uh, you know, we, we walk away, right? The engagement's over uh, and, and it's really on the customer to decide when they want to re-engage uh, and, and for what they want to re-engage uh, that then kicks off the cycle again, right? So with the next gen offering, you'll notice right up front, the starting point is different, right? From, from the traditional approach, uh, we, we start off with, laying out the long-term vision, right? We wanna understand what your challenges are, what your business objectives are, uh, and that is the foundation for what we're gonna do. From there, we assign a team that effectively becomes your team of all the resources I mentioned before to help shape those requirements, prioritize them, and start executing, right? And, and as we execute, uh, as you've probably seen with any other technology platform, Right, midway through priority priorities might change, uh, and and we either need to pivot and do something else or push things out. But no matter what, we maintain visibility into that uh, and, and track everything in the backlog, right? And with that approach, you're no longer measuring us on did we deliver the scope, did we meet the number of hours, uh, were there any change orders? It's more about how, how close did we come to meeting your outcomes? And, and what are the next outcomes that we need to accomplish? Uh, so, you know, it, it's very flexible. And as you would expect, the long-term vision evolves over, your, over time, right? It evolves with the nature of your business. And, and that's, that's the way it should be with, with a platform like ServiceNow. So what I described is really the difference between project-centric and product-centric delivery. Right, so um, ServiceNow is a massive platform with tons of great functionality. Uh, and, and if you have any kind of vision, the only way to successfully execute that vision is by taking the product-centric approach, right? Um, you know, if, if you engage in these start and stop projects, it's gonna be very difficult to gain traction and momentum and, and you know, seamlessly realize the value of the platform. And, you know, the, the, the approach is one thing, but just to revisit, uh, the people are equally as important, right? So it's, it's not just having a group of people, it's having a group of the right people, which are very hard to find nowadays, to help define your roadmap and execute on it, right? So as part of the next gen offering, we provide a product owner who partners with whether it's the, the platform owner, 
uh, the executive sponsor to understand the current challenges, uh, lay out what outcomes you want to accomplish, and then start executing, right? Um, from that point, the engagement manager, architects, and technical consultants get involved and make uh, that vision come to life. Uh, in certain scenarios, we'll pull in a business process consultant. We feel strongly that, especially if you're deploying a new piece of functionality, uh, you're embarking on a new strategic initiative, it's important to lay out the business process first. This way we, you know, we don't put bad process into what could have been a really good tool. Now, I said a lot, but but I want to talk through a use case where we put all of this into practice via the next gen offering, right? So there's a large financial institution, uh, and you know they 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 had no shortage of challenges, right? Now the problem they had is uh, they had many work streams going in parallel, um, so there was you know there there was a lot happening, but most of it wasn't tied to an overall vision, right? So you had individual stakeholders kind of tunnel vision into what they needed to accomplish, but didn't necessarily have visibility across everything else that was going on in the platform. Um, this was operated as a project, right? So initially there were lots of stops and starts, there were change orders, scope changes, scope reductions. Um, you know, there were certain things that just it didn't happen as, as smoothly because it was run as a project. And that in turn created budgetary challenges, right? Because then if, if, if you're not sure, you know, where you're going to land with your budget, how can you forecast for what you're going to need the following month or the following quarter or even for the year, right? So the inconsistency itself in the model just, just creates some challenges when you're, you're trying to just focus on achieving some of your outcomes. Now, like I said before, it, it really starts with the vision, and this is the framework we applied, right? So again, understanding the challenges, establishing what the outcomes are, and then prioritizing them on a nice visual roadmap that becomes the blueprint for everything we're gonna do going forward, right? Now, once we had an understanding of, you know, the, the something to accomplish, and if you look, these are pretty, some pretty common uh, expectations, right? Digitizing processes, improving operational efficiency, and modernizing the end user experience. Um, I, I think those are all things that all of us here are trying to accomplish in one capacity or another, right? But once we understand what those are, we can then marry them to the functionality on the platform and then come up with the platform roadmap, right? So You'll see we started here with, you know, some, some of the things uh, in the nearer term, more definitive. And as you went out, there was a little bit more uncertainty. Things got a little bit spread out, which, which is fine, right? And as we go through, right, you see quarter, quarter by quarter, the roadmap is evolving, right? We're pivoting on things. On the bottom, you see we, we continue to build out the product backlog uh, and maybe some things uh, get get pulled into execution, maybe some things get pulled into the backlog, but that's the goal, right? At the end of the day, we're still continuing to drive forward and revisit everything when necessary. While that's all happening, uh, we also include platform support, right? So we're looking after the CMDB health and wellness, making sure that you know any defects that occur in production are resolved immediately and staying on top of the required ServiceNow upgrades, right? So that's, I mean, this, this is really the full picture, right? Up top, you have the build, right? Deploying new functionality, and down low, you have the, the platform support that's absolutely required. Now, where'd we end up? So at the end of this, uh, you know, we were able to get all the work streams aligned to the common company goals. And this resulted in, you know, some things being pulled to the surface where it made, made sense to add to the roadmap. And honestly, some things just, you know, we had to deprioritize, but, but that's okay, right? Visibility into all of the ongoing initiatives helped both the internal organization as well as CDI 
partner better because we all had a sense of what was going on and whose priority, um, you know, came first and, you know, what was important. The fixed fee next gen engagement really allowed everyone, ourselves included, to focus on just, you know, delivering the outcomes, right? We didn't, we didn't have to worry about scope creep and going over hours and change orders. All of that went away and it was just focused on getting work done. And this made it, you know, very predictable, right? So now, instead of going from, you know, will I have the budget next month to execute on, on what I need to accomplish, you can literally say this, you know, for, for the next year, I know what my ServiceNow cost will be, right? And that's, I mean, that's pretty powerful when it comes to budgeting. Now, I, I went through a pretty complicated uh, scenario here, but it, it doesn't have to be that complicated. Right? It, it can be as simple as, hey, we just have one outcome, right? We want to monetize user experience. And here are the successive steps to get you from, you know, delivering a portal all the way through delivering a mobile experience and driving automation and automated fulfillment, right? So you can have one single threaded work stream. You can have multiple work streams going on in parallel, right? Um, the, the, the beauty of the offering is, you know, it's, it's not going to cost you a cent more uh, if, you know, if, if you have multiple threads going. We, we, we tailor the size of the team to how rapidly you're able to consume the platform and, and all its capabilities, right? And then overall, we include, again, the platform operations. Right, so you see we have the upgrades, enhancements, backlog, grooming, all that stuff, all included. Now, aside from the benefit of giving you the people, as well as the, the, the strategic roadmap, um, you know, there are some of the softer benefits, like, you know, we start to get to know one another and, and the team just develops velocity. Right, because everyone knows what to expect. Everyone understands the style of work, and you know, we as time goes, we work better and better together. Right, continuing to evolve the roadmap. Um, you know, maybe we we gain some momentum with a recently deployed service catalog, and HR saw it and is interested in their own catalog. And now you're having a HR service delivery discussion. Right, um, we, we can pull in just about any expertise when, when the time comes with no additional cost, right? Everything remains predictable uh, and, and it, it's, you know, the, the, the model is fixed. So I, I'm just gonna pause there and uh, just turn it over. So I'm gonna stop sharing my screen here and I just wanna have some open dialogue and I have a few questions for Dave. Uh, want to, you know, pick his brain a little bit on some some things that he's seen. So we've talked about a lot of different challenges with adoption and people um, and, you know, a few others, right? What, what are some of the most common challenges that you've encountered in, in your interactions with customers? Yeah, you know, Brian, it's, um, it's interesting when typically during when we introduce ServiceNow to, to a customer or a new module to a customer, we'll, we'll talk a lot about the value that we bring to the table. Right, whether it's cost savings, risk reduction, new street revenues of uh, new stream revenues, um, but uh, it's 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 just as important that we realize those propos value propositions after the implementation. And so, some of the challenges that I see out there are uh, creating that vision when we do, making sure that we're seeing it to completeness, right? Making sure that it, some of the components don't don't get pushed out or get deprioritized, and and that that goes that goes right hand in hand with some of the challenges we've seen around staffing, right? Making sure we have the right people engaged both during the implementation phase and during the um, operation phase. So that means investing in resources or an offering like NextGen to help maintain um, and implement the ServiceNow uh, infra uh, offerings. Um, and then, yeah, and to that point, once, once the implementation is complete, it's been measuring, this measuring success. Have we realized the value that uh, we were promised. Right, exactly. Yeah, and so those are some of the same things that we've seen and, and how we're able to help some customers. Um, but we do have some customers who 
you know, they're, they're just embarking on, on this service now journey, right? Either they don't have the tool, they're using an old tool and they want to move to service now, or they're just getting started with service now and haven't decided where to go next yet. So what, what advice do you have for, you know, CIO or CTO who's, who's at that point where they're just getting started with service now? You know, Brian, I would say um, have a plan. Work with us, work with a partner like CDI to create an implementation plan and a roadmap. And, and we have a lot of resources that we've published to help customers realize success with our platform. So if you go to servicenow.com forward slash success, you'll see our customer success guide that lists a lot of best practices around implementation, around staffing, building out a team. And then there'll be some aspects of the team that just don't make sense for a particular customer, especially in my space, right, the mid-market space, to, to, to have a full-time resource. So this is where your, off, your next-gen offering is a great add-on, right? Being able to, to turn to an offering like that to, to um, augment the ServiceNow team at, at any given organization and, uh, and to be able to fulfill that vision and, and implementation plan. Yeah, absolutely. So I, I might be a little bit biased here. Um, you know, my perspective on where next gen has worked, you know, i.e. the example I just uh, went through with the large bank, but um, where where have you personally seen the next gen offering be successful? Uh, quite a few places, actually. We, we work together on some great accounts. Um, the, the most recent one that I can think of is a financial services institution. That was a net new service now customer. Um, they lay, went live with uh, ITSM and virtual agent. Um, they're now building out CMDB and, and the next major release. And then we'll start utilizing functions like change management. They're looking at CSM, they're looking at DevOps. I mean, these folks have a great roadmap. Um, and, and the next gen offering really helped them stick to the timelines, making sure that they're adhering to, to, to the roadmap and the vision that was set during the initial sales cycle and seeing it to fruition, you know, realizing the value. Uh, that, that's been a great, uh, great success story for both of our organizations. You know, we also, we, we work with companies in many industries and in different sizes. So I know there's, there's one company in the manufacturing sector that, you, that the two, our two companies work together on. Um, they, they're, you know, those folks have a massive backlog. They're great customers. There's a lot they want to do with service now. They're short staffed. Um, NextGen's been great to help them expand and uh, realize value, expand into new, new verticals, into, into security, HR, compliance. Um, Lot, lots of good stuff going on there. And then also like on, on, on the flip side, some of the smaller customers, we, we, there's, there's, a, there's this mid-sized bank that we work on together that had a poor implementation experience at first. And with the next gen offering, we're really able to essentially take what was shelfware and turn it into a, a real great success story. And they're going live this summer. Yeah, excellent. Yeah, that's, it's great to hear. Uh, you know, you've seen some, some of the same successes that I've had. Uh, you know, and, and our customers really, you know, they, they vary across the board. So they do. And, I, and actually, that's where I kind of was hoping to ask you a few questions. You know, is there a certain type of customer, in your opinion, that's a better fit for next gen than others? Like, what, what have you seen? Yeah, so um, I, I would say a paying customer is always the best type, type of customer. <laughs> um, but no, in all, all seriousness, um, you know, there, there really isn't a better or worse customer everyone's different and the approach we take is different right so just going back to the example of the large bank right uh, as an organization as an organization they were you know on the more mature side um and they had a lot going on right where, where we provided value was kind of pulling everything in and making sense of it uh and and making sure that going forward everything was aligned and it didn't you know get get into this chaotic mode again but we have some smaller customers who, you know, almost have nothing going on, but they know they want more, but they just don't know where to go, right? So that's where we come in and, you know, we'll, we'll either do a technical assessment or a process assessment, understand their level of maturity, and then guide them through their roadmap and help build it out, right? So in, in that scenario, we're more so advisors, and then we're also executing on everything we advise. So it's um it could work for just about anyone. Yeah, I think I think the flexibility that this offering offers is uh is is, is 
quite enticing and, and, and really does apply to many different or, uh, types of organizations, of all, all sorts of sizes and in different industries. Uh, but another question I have for you, Brian, you know, I, I, I talked quite a bit earlier about one of our challenges at ServiceNow is, is making sure that we're, we're helping customers realize the value of, of what they've implemented. And, and you know, NextGen has a, a very um, mature framework of building out ServiceNow and also helping maintain it, helping run it. Um, curious, how do you folks help customers real, you know, measure and realize value of what they've deployed? Yeah, so there, there are a couple of things we do. Um, and again, it's tailored to the customer. So as part of the next gen offering, uh, we make sure to revisit the roadmap uh, on, on at least a quarterly basis, right? And in that conversation, we have an open dialogue around what's, you know, what, what's, what needs to happen in the future. But we also play back what we've done over the past, you know, two, three months and we highlight the alignment of, okay, we deployed this piece of technology and based on the outcome we set to accomplish, this is where we are, right? Here's how we move the needle on, you know, digitizing the end user experience. And here's what's left for the rest of the year in, in completing that objective, right? So, so we look at it from that lens and tying, you know, everything we do back, but we also like to get some metrics as well. Right, so if you're looking at, you know, ITSM is a really good example, right? Because it, it's more operational in nature, and there's some good KPIs you can extract, like mean time to resolve, um, you know, all, and 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 just about anything, you know, SLA achievement. So what we like to do when when the opportunity presents itself is take a baseline of where those metrics are when we start, and then measure them again, you know, three months in, six months in and just also show back how we're moving the needle. And all that information is, is powerful for, you know, our, you know, executive sponsors or, you know, the platform owners that we're working with to take back to their leadership and say, hey, you know what, like this, this service now thing was, was a good investment. Look, look at everything we're, we're accomplishing. Look what an impact it's having on our day-to-day -day operations, right? And you, you can't argue with numbers, right? I couldn't agree more. Everything you just said is, is spot on, and and that whole process of, of of looking at numbers, looking at the metrics, um, understanding the value that's, that's that's being derived is super important to uh, to, to, to having success with our platform. So that, that's great. Um, well, Brian, I know we're we're right up on uh, on on the half hour. Any closing thoughts from your side? Yeah, so just just quickly, you know, whether or not you choose to go with CDI or CDI's next gen offering, uh, you know, clearly there you're you're not alone in any challenges you're having with adoption. So my advice is, you know, if you want to really gain some traction, just start small, right? It doesn't you don't have to implement a whole application suite to gain visibility and traction, right? Find the right business case and, you know, achieve it with a small win that'll get you some attention right and just continue building on those small wins and that's really how you gain some traction often you know people try to take on too much and you know it ends up failing it ends up chewing up too many resources and people get upset right so just the message there is just you know keep keep it simple like they say right it applies here too what about yourself dave any anything you know, we are, um, we at ServiceNow are on an innovation spree. Every six months we come out with new functionality. We, we do a lot of incremental enhancements to existing products. We come out with new functions, new products. There's a ton of value, a ton we can do for you, our customers and for your organization in helping you digitize, improve experience, become more efficient in how you do things. And, uh, you know, these, these, implementation and ongoing operation is super critical to be able to support that. So an offering like NextGen um, and other offerings from CDI can be extremely helpful to, to us as service ServiceNow to bringing these new innovations to market, helping our customers get value out of it. Yeah, absolutely. Couldn't agree more. Well, Dave, th thanks again for your time. Um, you know, it was great having you and, you know, for everyone listening, I, I hope you found the session to be valuable uh, and, you know, let, let's connect sometime soon. Sometime soon.